I've traveled all over Africa. I've been in rural Africa. I've been everywhere. I can always find a Coke and I can always find a Fanta orange. So why can't I always find the vaccine that I need or an oral rehydration solution for a child that's having diarrhea? Go choose a very remote place in Zambia, somewhere near the Mozambique border, for example, and wait and see whether the vaccines show up. Sometimes they do, but that's not good enough, is it? They have to reach all the health posts all the time because of the nature of disease, you get an outbreak and the outbreak spreads. So when you ask the question about, you know, what are the differences in delivering vaccines in a high resource versus low resource country, one absolutely relates to costs and financing. The second major barrier is I take my children to get vaccines, I drive a mile or two to the pediatrician's office, I do that at my convenience, and my child gets those vaccines. You know, in many other places, we're talking about communities where they certainly don't have cars. In many instances, they may not have roads. They don't have pediatricians' offices that, you know, are available eight hours a day, six days a week. So there are just logistical transportation delivery barriers that are quite different in those countries than in, in our country here. We know that the neglect of vehicles has a profound effect on the health of people across the continent. So we train mechanics, local mechanics, to a very high standard. It's not just maintaining vehicles, but it's bringing parts from wherever they are, probably Japan, and also managing stores, managing the, the, the parts, and managing the people, managing the fuel. So it sounds obvious, but what it is is actually quite difficult to put on the ground. But without it, nobody's going anywhere. If you're organising a clinic and you're inviting people to come to an outreach station, it's going to have to be the third Thursday of every month. And if you're not there because your vehicle breaks down, lots of very disappointed women who have walked 10, 15 kilometres with their babies are going to go away but fewer of them will return. So predictability is absolutely essential. If you say it's the third Thursday, you'd better be there. And it's no good saying, well, my motorcycle broke down or my pickup broke down because there's no women there to hear you say it. They've gone by then. And if you don't do that in an orderly way, you will never get control of child immunization, never. It's not reaching one person once with something. It's reaching all the people all the time is the problem. And very few people picture that. Children keep getting born. You, you know, people don't, st don't say, oh, well, that's enough children now. I mean, they're born every day, every hour. You have to reach all the new ones all the time. And you can't, you can't mess about with oil filters. You have to change them. It's not optional. So in our program in the Gambia, for example, we ran the first 10 million kilometers, that's a lot of kilometers, with no breakdowns. 100% of the children born in that country are immunized against everything because they all get reached all the time. However wonderful your drug is, however good your vaccine is, you cannot immunize a child with a mobile phone. You've got to have a person see that child and all the children in that area, and you've got to do it predictably and reliably. So I think that has to be a lesson that not just we have learned, but everybody needs to think about.